Good morning, Digit fam. Adam Dowd here, closing out E3 week with your latest dose of tech. And this week, we've been pretty heavily medicated on gaming, which is fun. Also, a programming note that Digit Daily will be taking a couple of days off while Tristan and I are out of town on separate vacations. They won't let us vacation together because of all the trouble we'd cause. <laughs> and as much as I love waking up and talking to all of you every day, even passions need breaks. Sam will be your guide for the first half of next week until I return, which will either be on Thursday or Friday, depending on how I weather my 28th hour in a car in the span of one week. But for now, it is June 12th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. The last day of major E3 news belongs solely to Nintendo, and with good reason. Nintendo came out of the gates swinging, and I might be mixing my metaphors there, but just follow me here. Starting off, we have a sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it's appropriate, don't you think, that The Legend of Zelda has actually become kind of a legend itself. I mean, Link is right up there in the pantheon of Nintendo characters, and incidentally, one of my favorite characters to play in Smash Brothers. But anyway, Nintendo released a trailer for the as yet un titled sequel featuring some creepy backwards music and a reanimating creature of some sort. The trailer did not give away any kind of release date. Scott on the newsletter suspects it's at least two years away. Ali Craig over at Android Authority suspects Christmas of 2020 and of course, 2020. Gamers, seriously, do you really get jazzed over something coming out in 18 months? Phone OEMs need to get a hold of that special sauce, I'm just saying. Another game, Animal Crossing New Horizons, has been pushed back until, survey says, 2020. Shocking, I know. It looks cute, kind of like a Farmville kind of game. Not really my cup of tea, but I won't yuck your yum. More power to ya. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is coming to the Switch. The game won multiple awards back in 2015, but the graphic-intensive game will run well on the Switch's hardware, albeit at 540p while handheld. Still, not bad. Anyways, always good to see new stuff heading to Nintendo's popular mobile platform. We also got a release date for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remake for September of 2019. And I'm starting to see a pattern here. Remakes happen in the same year, new stuff the following year. It's a wonder anything new gets made at all. There's a ton more all coming from Nintendo, so once again I'm going to refer you back to Digit.com to check out the latest edition of the newsletter, which fortunately is not limited to 7 minutes. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter, Tristan Loves to Snuggle. But we have one more top story for you today. Quite possibly the most convincing deepfake video yet was released on Instagram yesterday, and it featured none other than Instagram CEO Mark Zuckerberg. The video shows Zuckerberg saying... Well, this. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data. All their secrets, their lives, their futures. I owe it all to Spectre. Spectre showed me that whoever controls the data controls the future. As you can imagine, Zuckerberg did not say that, well, at least not in public anyway. What's most shocking about this is Instagram's reaction to it. Instagram told Motherboard it would treat this just like any other misinformation on the platform. It'll deprioritize it rather than remove it. Which, hey, props to Instagram for not treating this video differently just because it involves its own CEO. But on the other hand, bad Instagram for not removing obvious misinformation. Put frankly, Deprioritization is not the answer for BS. Kill it with fire. This kind of fake content can and will influence the masses. And if you don't pay close attention to this video, you might miss the fact that it's fake. And when it comes to content like this, this isn't about who's smart and who's dumb. This is about how information like this can affect a lot of people. I'll let Agent K explain. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. The bottom line here, this is a fight against misinformation, and I'll say it again, BS does not end with deprioritization. It ends with elimination. People in echo chambers have a tendency to share misinformation even when it's deprioritized. You can't see it, but I'm doing air quotes. 
and burying your heads in the sand will not help this problem. Because if we're not willing to fight this problem, we're allowing it to fester. Maybe I'm just a little bit more irked because I work in the news, which has an emphasis on truth, but I just can't see a plus side for allowing stuff like this to exist. But I'm starting to get salty, so let's take a step back and head into the roundup! And speaking of Facebook, it wants to buy your data. No, seriously. No longer content with simply stealing it, Facebook wants to make you an offer you can't refuse. An Android app available in the Google Play Store will give Facebook access to your apps, and more specifically, what apps you use and how long you use them. How much will Zuckerberg pay out? A recent similar app paid out about 20 bucks a month, so if you don't care about privacy and you want to make an extra trip to Dairy Queen every month, maybe give it a look. This podcast not sponsored by Dairy Queen. Also, speaking of deep fake videos, last month's Drunk Nancy Pelosi video went viral among conservatives, and Mark Zuckerberg recently reached out personally to Pelosi to discuss how it was handled. She hasn't called him back, which on the face of it is delicious. But on the other hand, this is a government representative failing to engage in discourse with one of the most powerful tech influencers on how things like this can be prevented. I mean, I get it. I really get it. And can I just say, anyone who actually thought Pelosi was drunk in that video clearly has never played back a podcast at half speed. It's a function available in most podcast players, and it's freaking hilarious. If you want to know what I sound like drunk, play back this podcast at half speed. Or show up on Bourbon Street sometime next week. You won't be able to tell the difference. Dropbox wants to be your one-stop shop for all things work. Dropbox announced a new app called, creatively enough, The Dropbox, which will tie into services like Office, Google Docs, Slack, Zoom, and just about every other app you use for work. This sounds intriguing for sure, but I just don't see it. Personally, I'm a very compartmentalized person, so I actually kind of enjoy switching between apps for various tasks. Plus, I'm a member of like six different Slack rooms and at least three different Google accounts. I'm not sure how Dropbox would handle that kind of integration, but I suspect it would be a mess. I also suspect that remote working freelancers are not exactly the target demographic for Dropbox. And finally, Tesla has a design for a submarine car just laying around the office. This design is based on James Bond's submarine car from The Spy Who Loved Me. I mean, it's not surprising that Tesla has worked on a car like this. What is surprising is that Elon hasn't actually built it yet. Though, as Elon said in what I always imagine is Christopher Walken's voice, I think the market for this would be small, small, but enthusiastic. You bet your bippy you'd be enthusiastic. But that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again on Monday. And can I just say, anyone who actually thought Pelosi was drunk in that video clearly has never played back a podcast at half speed. It's a function available in most podcast players, and it's freaking hilarious. If you want to know what I sound like drunk... Play back this podcast at half speed or show up on Bourbon Street sometime next week. You won't be able to tell the difference.